back in formation now as the lights change and Gasher accelerates away but it's going to be Scholwitz that leads and the Ferrari comes up the inside line release to Powell to go second and Jules Gounon in the yellow and uh, black Audi also tries to wriggle away throughout wide goes Gache not a great start by him so Wirtz leads and Ulisse to power up in a second and here comes Gounon on the inside line three wide behind them contact is avoided but Gounon a man on a mission yeah Gounon made the position but did he lose it no he's not he's managed to stick so great opportunism by Jules Gounon but look at the cars coming through the exit of Huggenholz now side by side up through the rubber slot to mark a curve as they climb the hill and then into Schleve like this downhill right hand corner and you take a deep breath and when you exit you can exhale. Yeah, Casper Stevenson tried to take advantage of that but wasn't quite sufficiently close to the back of the Audi to do anything about it. He thinks maybe he got a run down the straight down this relatively now short pit straight here at Zandvoort but here you see straight line performance of all the cars more or less identical. Down to Tarzan they come, a lead gap still six tenths of a second and Aurelian Panis has jumped up into fourth place now so Panis has got ahead of Simon Gachet so Gachet from the outside of the front row dropping down the order Aurelian Panis working his way up through the field as Bogoslavski thinks about a move here yeah he goes a little bit higher than to get try and get the car down before the exit of the corner to shoot the Mercedes that up the hill and try and make progress right he couldn't get any closer to the rear of that ID uh, but what can he do out of turn nine they come then and look further back that you see Christian Clean go through. Uh, Chris Froggart's been another man on a mission. And in replay, let's catch up with the Mercedes trying to gain ground into the Hugenholz box. Goes to the outside of Ramos and keeps on going and keeps on going and comes up ahead. That was a very brave move. This is how Valentino Rossi saw it, John. Yeah, he's sitting back thinking, mm, I wonder if I can maybe do the same thing. But even Frogger at the back of the Mercedes stepped out, but oh. he was committed. He was going to go around the outside, whatever. Did Rossi gain that? I think he did. Yeah. So one round the outside, one up the inside. Ramos in Pro-Am drops back, but very, very bold move. That really brave stuff by Chris Frogger up the outside on the banking, and it worked for him, and Rossi gains a place as well. Now Bogoslavski there on the inside, look, trying to whoops, get in the traffic and he gets into the side of the Audi and he turns around Jean-Baptiste Simonar. That puts Simonar in the gravel. That was a bit clumsy. Yeah, I mean, it's inevitable that happens when you get three cars into the space of one into Tarzan. Whether that will see a penalty for Bogoslavski or not, we wait to see. But um, it, it was avoidable, but in the circumstances, watch again and see the Mercedes dives down the inside. The Audi doesn't see it coming, the 33 Audi, and all of a sudden, Mercedes runs up the track, the Audi coming down. That's the penalty of going the long way around Tarzan. You've got to be aware that the car below you is going to run up the side of the racetrack. Well, certainly Jean-Baptiste Simonal came off worse. He was 15th, he'll be lower than that now. He did get going again, as you saw, so thankfully the race continues unaffected. Charles Witt's last lap through was the best of the race as the fuel load comes down. So Charles Witt's now is over a second clear. Well, a good job by the Lamborghini, Thomas Cruz, and keeping ahead of what is a winning car, but not at this point, and no chance in reality of Timo Bogoslavski getting from his position right now, which is 15th, onto a podium. Well, I say that. Look who's behind them, though. Patrick Kroprinski in the Pro-Am leading McLaren, doing an outstanding job here. 16th overall, and look at the pace that he's got. That car doing a very, very good job. Kropinski uh, made his money in uh, business many years ago. He owns this team. He's a very accomplished driver now as well. Here once more, Neubauer on the back of Gilles Magnus. He had one go at Tarzan Herpin a lap ago. It didn't work, but the move starts now. He's got a great opportunity. This is deja vu, one lap ago. These two cars, all of us has won. Again, Neubauer forced to out to the left as he dives into Tarzan. Now make the undercut, undercut now. Watch up through the Rob Schlottermacher curve, that's where I think the McLaren might have gained a little bit of its speed, but it's all been negated as they get up to the top of the hill and they drop down in through Schlovlach. When Valentino Rossi, I think now, in this race, is showing more of what I would imagine, the spirit of the racing driver motorcycle motor. Oh! No, I've spoken too soon. Rowdy goes, thankfully it's run off tarmac, not gravel there. So Valentino Rossi is able to rejoin. John, you've torn it now. But he was having a go, that's the main thing. <laughs> he was racing. No damage done in terms of what's happened to the car. Loss of place, yes, but he's still in the race. He'll be able to regroup and catch back up again. But he'll have a threepenny bit tyre. Watch and see, here he goes. The back end starts to steer away. Round it goes, a high-speed spin. Those tyres are going to be pretty flat-spotted all around. 
hopefully not sufficiently bad that'll make him make an O and there it goes again. That's the onboard shot of what happened. And I mean, at the point Incident he's in looking like a racing car. car. 89 and 33 in turn one under investigation. That was what we were predicting for Timo Bogovslavski. And just to tidy off the Gilles Magnus incident, I understand it was that the tools were not cleared from the grid. On board with Jim Plough, the Audi, now he's got to wait until he comes down to the end of the pit lane, but there's the Mercedes in the back run, but the gap has actually extended. What was the time for the Mercedes, for the number 32 Audi? 52.2, yeah. fraction E to there, there, as you can see visually, it's... It, but was Ferrari in second place? No, it's the Mercedes in second place. And Valentino Rossi is in to give way to Frederick Levy. So they've kept him out a little bit longer. Give him a bit more track time, because it's all relevant for tomorrow, the more miles he does. So from being a long way down anyway, you could argue that bringing him in early wasn't going to achieve very much. So uh, counter that by giving Valentino Rossi more mileage. Tires go onto the car. Only the two mechanics can work on it. Now you can see how jumbled the order is after the pit stops. Number one, one, two there. Slightly getting in the way of the Audis. That's the McLaren that's just come back into the race. And also now round the outside line there goes the Gulf Audi. And at the back of that group is Raffaele Marchiello. So great battle pack is going on here. There you see the gap. It is visually, well, I would say, but is that two seconds? Maybe Five, it's actually come down. Four, four, three, full course three, yellow two, is being called for. One, full yeah, course yellow, yellow, yellow now. Now, this could be for the cone, quickly to remove that. It could be to try and get the McLaren out of the way. Now that the pit window is closed, the order isn't going to be affected by the uh, throwing of a situation. I think it's a full course yellow to get that off the track, actually. In which case, I was going to say, it should be done fairly swiftly, but where's the marshal to do it? Well, I mean, it's there, it's obvious, it's a big distraction, but it's not no, 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 there's a car to be recovered causing an can... issue for the competitors, but I think it's a tidying up exercise, and in the process, assuming we'll get a full, uh, we'll get a safety car following the full core shallow, it will tighten the pack yeah. back up. Green flag, green flag. To, green sort of flag. to see flag. whether the car ahead of you is committing to accelerate, and Jim Parr read that absolutely right, so they are close, he pulls out to have a tentative look, and there, look, going defensive is Pierre-Alexandre Jean because Patrick Niederhauser is right there behind him, diving into the first corner. Three tenths of a second was the leading gap. And that was a good start. Everybody got through Tarzan without any contact. A little bit of racing further down the field. But the gap, third, fourth and fifth, really, Jean, Niederhauser, Christopher Hauser, that's where most of the action is going to be as race leader and second place. It's beginning to marginally stretch away from the rest of the field. I was just wondering whether or not Jim Plough wasn't dropping away again and into the clutches. Yes, he is, of Pierre-Alexandre Jean. So again, part of this is tyre temperature after that safety car procedure. Look at the way that Dries Van Thor is disappearing up the road and suddenly this long, long line of cars for second place suggests that Jim Plough is vulnerable because Pierre-Alexandre Jean has a look to the inside line. This ain't over yet. By Thomas Drouet directly oh. ahead and oh, Marcello, wow. And look at this, you've got there Umbrescu battling with Benji Goethe. That's for second in silver. Goethe to the inside line, goes through, and also trying to make a move there. Look, it's Christopher Meese. He's got past the Mercedes. He's about to make a move against the other Audi as well. Side by side, Meese in the blue and white Audi goes through. Two places in two corners, outstanding. I tell you what, you cannot buy experience. That's what Christopher Meese has got. He saw what was happening. He knows what he needs to do, and he just executed it perfectly. Here you go again. Look at the outside line. Goethe makes his move on the inside and Meese just slingshots across the road. Yep, and he then was on the right part of the racetrack, climbing up the hill, up through Rob Schluttermacher into Schlebeck, and then find the position. Wow, Christopher Meese, you haven't lost it yet. With just about less than a lap time left, so this should be the last lap for him. It should be, if it's not, it's about a second over. There we see Babel again for fourth place defence from the Ferrari and forcing Nida Haja to look at an alternative way. He wants to get up the inside. He's thinking about positioning himself for the hook and hose hairpin, trying to force the Ferrari to do what Nida Hauser wants it to do. Now, will he dive up the high line or undercut back down as quickly as he possibly can? But he hasn't got the pace. Ferrari is consolidated momentarily as they go now into this Rob Schluttermacher, this long, long left hander, which then transfers back to the right and then to the downhill Schlavlock. Great corner, best corner for me here at Zandvoort. 
through that right. It drops down, it climbs again the other side, then up towards the master's box. The Ferrari certainly is under pressure. Pierre-Alexander Jean doing his best to hang on to the place. Just over half a minute of the race remains. So, Patrick Niederhauser for Santa Lock in the blue Audi, attacking but also trying to fend off the challenge of the Attempto car there behind of Dennis Marshall. We're into that last half minute. Do you know what I would do if I was Street Spencer? Back off. Yeah. Back off. I've got a 2.7 second advantage. I can easily lose one second. And that might make the difference between coming across the line on one more lap and the chequered flag. Well, no doubt the team will be on the radio as 32 Audi then, 10 seconds to go, heads towards the line. It's going to be a win. It's going to be for Dries Van Thor and Charles Witt. It's a second of the season, an overdue victory at Zandvoort up to the chequered flag, which should be there. The clock hits zero. Through it goes. The flag does not come out on time, but the race is over. The clock has hit zero. So Dries Van Thor and Charles Witt take the win. Second across the line, Jim Pla and Jules Gounon. And it's a very, very happy Charles Witt then who can celebrate on as they're going to get another lap, I suspect, because none of the drivers would have seen a flag. So some are going to keep on racing, but the race is over. We've hit the allotted time. Opening race done. That'll affect the championship, of course, and it affects it thus. It now puts into the lead Charles Witt and Dries Van Thor, ahead of Timor Bogoslowski and Rafael Marchiello with Jim Pla third. Fourth overall, Elise de Pau and Pierre Alexander Jean, ahead of Patrick Niederhauser and Aurelien Panis with Simon Gachet and Christopher Hauser next. Jules Gounon, of course, not scoring the same number of points as Jim Clark because he had to miss an event while he was away, winning at Bathurst. A real boost to the confidence. Trophies in the air for cameras. Everybody huddles together on the podium. And we shall see whether tomorrow's grid offers us a very different look to the race. But as the champagne sprays, hats off to Dries Van Thor and Charles Wirtz, Wattie, because that was a perfect drive.